Last week I said something like and Angelo T. This week I'm gonna say the same thing. And Angelo T. Welcome to and uh, I don't know how. Yeah, I have no better ideas. If you have some ideas, just drop them in the comments. Don't be shy. I'm gonna accept everything. At the end of the day, I said and Angelo T. So there are no bad ideas. But anyway, let's just jump into it. Yesterday or today, I'm really confused sometimes because today is Wednesday, usually NXTs are on Tuesdays and yeah, I'm watching always one day afterwards and all that stuff, but the show was kicked off by a match between The Family and Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo and it was awesome, it was a pretty good match, the match didn't start in a conventional way like every team making their entrance to the ring and all of that stuff, basically The Family attacked Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo in the back, the match continued in the ring and all of that stuff, in the end The Family retained. I thought that would be really disappointing if Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo lost because they're rebuilding their characters and they have been in a row and now they're on NXT and the motion and all of that stuff but they put on hell on a fight and it was pretty pretty good and actually how the match went was Angel Garza went low on stacks and he went for the pin and after that stacks went low as well when he was trying to kick out and basically Angel Garza was having pain in the balls and that's why they lost and basically that's how the <laughs> family retained if you if you were wondering next up we had the two qualification matches for deadline which were Kelani Jordan versus Kiana James which was not that impressive matchup. The thing that I have noticed is that every time someone interferes in those matches, in this case, Kiana James was the favorite one, of course, but Roxanne Perez showed up and because she has a beef with Kiana James, basically she cost her the match with distraction. And yeah, basically Kelani Jordan is the one who qualified for the match. The other match was Braun Breaker versus Eddie Torpy. Why am I always saying Eddie Torpy? It's Eddie Torp. But I was expecting again someone to interfere, for example, the group of Gulag to interfere to attack Eddie Torp, but no one interfered. In which case, Eddie just looked like a complete loser because if they interfered, now it would have looked like Braun Breaker needs some help in order to win, but now Braun looks dominant going into the Iron Survivor match. Which is fine, like, Braun is dominant, so. I guess it makes sense. These were the qualifiers, but we understood when we went in the back that Shawn Michaels have announced that next week there's gonna be a final qualifications, uh, which are basically gonna include every loser from the bracket. So we'll see what will happen. For now, this is what we have. We had an Andre Chase segment, which was weird because they were announcing for weeks how Andre Chase have done something really bad and all of that stuff and Chase U is uh, having a lot of problems but now when that whole thing happened he just said that gambling is ha happening on the campus and there is a big debt he didn't say how much was the debt who is he owing these money to probably the family I don't know and yeah it was just a little bit of a nonsense, five minutes nonsense, like Duke Hudson was confused, Tia Hale was confused, everyone was just confused, me included. After that we had an amazing match between Nathan Fraser and the NXT champion Ilya Dragunov. All that match happened because basically some guys watched the video from last week uh, between Baron Corbin and Ilya Dragunov that Baron Corbin has everything and Ilya Dragunov he is not living even with his family and all of that stuff and Nathan Fraser was like wow Baron Corbin is living such a nice life and Ilya Dragunov was like you want to live Baron Corbin's life and uh, Nathan Fraser was like yeah actually I do and uh, 
yeah, they had a match because Ilya Dragunov is uh, mad at something always and uh, the match turned out to be great. Uh, a lot of aggression, but I liked it because you can see the aggression in Nathan Fraser as well. But in the end, of course, the aggression in Ilya Dragunov prevailed and he was able to pin Nathan Fraser. And after the match, Baron Corbin had a cute little promo on the screen and he said the next week Ilya Dragunov and Ben Corbin will come face off on NXT and that will be awesome. A match that was a little bit random but I can see how it's coming because it's building for weeks kind of. Ariana Grace versus Carmen Petrovic. Uh, there was a cute little promo for Carmen Petrovic before the match that she's studying karate or something like this and what does karate have to do with swords, ma'am? Can I ask? And after that they had a match. Ariana Grace won because I think Carmen was distracted because Joe Gacy all of a sudden came out, out of the ring. It was, it happened for him to be under the ring the whole show and he took the bell and some random shenanigans happened and I was really curious to see what is the fishing finisher of Carmen Petrovic but I saw only the finisher of Rihanna Grace and it's just a body slam. Next, Lexus King versus Brooks Jensen. That match happened because Lexus King is everywhere and he's trying to make enemies everywhere and he was basically having interference with the bar. Can I tell these guys the bar, Brooks Jensen and Briggs, these guys? You know, and he was saying that they're losers and all of that stuff. And yeah, you know, you know the drill. And uh, they had a match, and uh, Alexis King won. And his finisher is Chef's Kiss. It's like a, a Sister Abigail, but with some corkscrew element to it. It was, it was, mm, mm, it looked really good. And. Uh, Basically, Carmelo Hayes tried to interfere his match to distract him, but actually the distracted one was Brooks. So, yeah, actually in the end, Lexus King won, and I'm really excited to see Carmelo Hayes and Lexus King feud, to be fair, because I feel like there is a lot of potential in Lexus King, since he has a lineage, and uh, yeah, I want to see I want to see that feud happening. Make it, make it, make it work. Yeah, yeah, cook it. Last but not least, fatal four-way match, which will determine if Wesley is gonna be able to challenge for the NXT North American title. If he loses the match, he won't be able to challenge for the title. Never, never. He's not gonna be able to challenge for the title. Never, ever, ever. Basically, the match was between Wesley, Johnny Gargano, Cameron Grimes, Bronson Reed. It was weird because all of these guys are former champions. They already moved to SmackDown, to Raw. Uh, everyone was thinking, hey, Wesley has no chance because Bronson Reed is in the match as well. He's gigantic. He's handling everything. And at some point, Ivor came out. And he was like, oh, no, 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 you're not winning the match. He took out Bronson Reed. They were fighting in the back, whatever. So in the ring were left Johnny Gargano, Cameron Grimes and Wesley. And somehow Wesley hit cardiac kick on Cameron Grimes at some point. And he took the pin and he won. And on that line, we're going to see Wesley versus Dominic Mysterio. And I think Wesley is going to win that one. Unfortunately, I kind of wanted to see a long reign for Dominic Mysterio. I don't know why. He's not even on NXT, but interesting, interesting. But anyway, if I was to rate an Angelo T, I would have given it a solid 8.2 out of 10. Because to be fair with you, everyone, the only random match was Ariana Grace versus Carmen Petrovic, which was not that random because they are boiling that feud for weeks. And I don't know, it was, it, it is just not 9 out of 10, but it is not 7, it's not exactly 8.2 out of 10. It's cutting it. It, it. it was a good show. It was a good show, especially that last match. Every spot was like perfect and everyone was going holy shtick, holy shtick, holy shtick. And you know the drill. So, thank you guys so much for watching and I'm gonna see you soon. Peace.